Hi guys, um, in this video I want to give uh, my take on relationships when living with chronic pain. Um, I believe that everyone's circumstances are different and, and their degree of pain is different, uh, their ability uh, to function is different and what they need from a relationship and what they want from a relationship uh, is all, di all different. Um, they also could be at a different stage in life. Um, so it's it's so personalized, it's really vastly different. Uh, and so the ideas that I'm sharing in this video are not absolute. Uh, it's not meant to be correct and it's not meant to be concrete advice. Um, but just give some suggestions and ideas uh, for the <coughs> viewers to think about. Um, so let's start with my story which may assist in you guys understanding my perspective and where I'm coming from when answering some of these uh, topics. And so, um, so some of the topics that I like to talk about um, are being alone uh, compared to being in a relationship. Um, how to communicate with a new potential partner um, of your condition. Um, looking for, you know, we can talk about um, how to look for someone new, uh, how to find love. Um, we also like to talk about, you know, feeling useless because uh, we could be, you know, set of our energy or, or there's a lot of things that we can't do around the house cleaning around the house so feeling useless and feeling like a burden in, in the relationship um, and also you know maybe a little bit uh, we can talk about uh, maybe talk about you know our significant other or our partner leaving us um, and also maybe feeling a bit uh, pitied uh, feeling like being in a petite relationship and they, they don't want to leave us or so stuff like that. So these are the topics um, I would like to talk to, uh, discuss today. Now, as I mentioned that it's probably easier if I talk about myself, um, what happened to me. Uh, so for me, um, what happened was I broke up with the girl uh, that was in a relationship for five years. Uh, and because we were living together after we broke, uh, we broke up, I moved out. And it wasn't long after that my pain started. Um, and uh, there were times that I thought um, during it, that time, um, we realized it turned out that mm, likely that because I was moving house that I herniated my disc again. So that's likely the cause of uh, my constant pain uh, coming back again. Um, and it wasn't long after, you know, living with constant pain for three months that I started to think about um, that I can never be in a relationship anymore. Um, not that I was thinking about it, but it was just the like, a, you know, normal progression in life. You find someone and you settle down. So it wasn't long after, you know, three months and then I started to think, oh, look, I can't be with anyone anymore who wants to be with a cripple and dealing with all the mess that I have to deal with um, so you know the fears that I have job worry job security um, having kids um, uh, and career and, and hobbies and friends it's just <clears throat> I couldn't conceive why anyone would want to be with me uh, so that made me feel really depressed at one stage um, and but what was surprising is that after a while it was I actually quite felt a bit of a freedom from not needing to worry about you know needing to find someone and you know needing to get married um, you know, I could focus all my energy on you know looking after myself um, it was actually quite refreshing because I, you know as I mentioned I just got out of a five-year relationship back then and I just didn't need to tailor for someone else's um, tailor for someone else and just being by myself instead of being uh, an entity with a partner <coughs> so that was actually quite good I actually enjoyed being single then 
being with someone else. Um, after a while, I did dabble in a, a, a few relationships, um, but they were all non-serious relationships, and there's not much need to talk about them. They didn't really impact uh, me much in regards to living with chronic pain and having someone else because you know, they were just not serious. They were just, I don't know how to classify them. Um, and I met my now fiancé um, about probably about three, three or four years li after living with chronic pain. Um, and I'm currently on my sixth or seventh, I think it's the seventh day living with constant pain. Um, and so I won't go into great detail about the relationship and uh, what happened. Uh, I'll talk about them, I guess, when we talk about these uh, subjects. Um, so, so with that backstory, I'm gonna give my perspective of some of the issues to th and issues and things to think about, ideas to think about uh, when being in a relationship. Um, and the first is uh, naturally, as I discussed before, being alone. Um, it could be a blessing in disguise, the fact that you can just focus on yourself. Um, there's no need to make, there's no, being alone is this benefit, there's no need to consider for someone else, right? So recently we had a pub public holidays here and I went on a road trip uh, down south and um, I was going through like as you as you guys know going on a road trip is quite painful especially when you have back pain and I, I was just pushing it through so you know like um, my fiance was going scuba diving obviously I didn't go scuba diving um, I you know I just sat next to the beach and um, just played on my phone um, you know, so th there are benefits that you can just focus on yourself and you don't need to push yourself through things that you don't really want to push through. So that's like one benefit. Um, the other benefit is, um, you know, fear of dragging someone else down. You don't need to worry about that issue. Like if you like, cause our lifestyle is a lot more indoorsy, right? Um, and if you don't have a significant other, then you don't really need to worry about that too much. Um, but I do want to touch on that if you are in a relationship, that it, it is too important to make an effort, right? It's too important to make an effort, like I did. Like, I still went on the trip with her, even though we, we hardly ever go on trips. But, you know, like, you know, I control, I try to control all the, you know, factors and just be really careful. So, um... On one end, if you are not with anyone, you don't have to go through that, dragging someone down, right? Uh, on the other hand, if you are with someone, I think it's still a good idea to put some effort into, um, you know, just meet in the middle with them, like, you know, because she, she said she wanted to go out, uh, go on trips, and I'm, um, you know, feeling a bit, I didn't really feel guilty, I'm not the type, but, you know, just to make her happy, we went, we went on a road trip. Um, the other thing is that uh, when I broke up with uh, the five-year relationship one, like, I was really happy because I could focus on myself. So, you know, being alone, you know, without, you know, a significant other, you can focus on your hobbies, um, you can focus on friends, um, making new friends. Um, and I think it's really important to make friends. Uh, it's probably more important to make friends, in my opinion, uh, than to find someone uh, to love and and to be around with I think friends are a lot more important and you know one of the great things about friends is that you can ditch them if you want <coughs> this I mean if you you can refer back to my other video like if you make a lot of friends if you if there's a movie that you you guys wanted to go to or it was the dinner day you can just ditch them by saying you know um, that you can't make it because you're in too much pain or make up some other excuse um, but with you know, if you're living with someone and you have a significant others, it's harder to ditch them. They are there for the long run, you know, or you hope that it's there for the long run. So there are, I think, benefits of um, just being alone. It's hard, maybe it's hard uh, to accept at the start, but, you know, once you get the hang of it, living alone, I still prefer to live alone, just don't let my fiancé hear this. Um, but... 
yeah, it's not too bad of a thing uh, living by yourself. Um, so, um, so being so you know anyway, I guess what I mean is that being single, there's a lot of benefits. Um, the other thing that is to consider is that if you are, if you do feel like you need to find someone and you want to find someone to share your life with, there's no, absolutely, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, finding someone. Um, it, my advice is to, um, just to, f if you want to find someone, it's better to, f to go through making friends first. Um, you can go back to my other video about making friends. And I think, um, I think making friends, it's best to start with friendship because like, this is how I met kind of, um, with my fiance, right? We weren't together at the start, but I, I already told her, you know, my back issue, my pain issues. And so knowing that you don't need to go on, like if you go on a dating website, um, or you're going to hook up, you know, you chat up someone. Like, it's really, I don't know, I think it's really hard to, 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 to get into the conversation of your, you know, explain to them your condition. So, it's a lot easier if you guys were just friends to start off with, you know, because they would know uh, your circumstances, uh, they would know, um, they would understand your lifestyle, like your more indoorsy, your more serene lifestyle. You know, you read more books, you stay home and watch more TV and movies, <coughs> and you don't, you know, go bungee jumping or you don't go hiking. Uh, so you don't, you know, they would know who you are um, or get the idea of who you are before, you know, you, uh, you guys hook up. Um, and they would also have more, uh, better understanding of your capacity as well. Like when I'm with my friends, I'll say that, you know, uh, look, my back is really hurting me right now. I gotta go. I mean, imagine like if uh, if you were dating someone, or not dating, like you were friends with someone, and and you just tell them that look, I gotta go. I got a bit of a back back pain, and I'll I need to head on home. Um, they may ask you whether uh, what you know what 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 your condition is, um, and then you know they can get to know you better. So they will know your capacity, how long you can stay outside. What kind of activities you can do outside, um, and so forth, um, and I think yeah. So that's pretty much it. I think starting off friendship has huge uh, uh, pros, um, you know, advantages to it because you get rid of at least fifty percent of the complications involved in explaining to someone your condition, what you can or you can't do. And the type of lifestyle, you know, the mental pain that you go through and the physical pain that you go through, they would already know most of it. And then, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So I think I would suggest go through friendship. And once you step into the friend uh, relationship, like both, you know, there is like, you know, like there's a bit of, I don't know how to say it in English. Like there's a bit of a chemistry, there's a bit of a spark there, right? Like when you're starting to get in that relationship, um, there's a lot of things to consider, especially for us. There's a lot of things that we worry about. We, you know, we worry about, as I mentioned, dragging them down. Um, but I just want to share what I did with my fiance. Like at the start, I just, as I mentioned before, I really enjoy being single because I didn't need to worry about all that. But when I about to get into this relationship now I have to worry about how my life is going to impact her and I was really wary of whether she understood what she was getting herself into because as you guys know this is the invisible disease they can't see our pain right so it's um it's like there's a how do I explain it, it it's it's something that I'm sure you guys understand like, it's just really hard to explain to someone what they are getting themselves into. Um, so, anyway, so what I did uh, with my fiancé, uh, or my girlfriend, yeah, back then, is that I was just brutally honest. Honest to the degree that I am thinking whether I'm annoying her or not. 
And when I say my brutal honesty is that every time when I have a fear of say, for example, look, uh, if my back doesn't, if it, if it gets even worse, then I'll be in a wheelchair. Um, you know, I won't be able to stand up for more than, you know, so forth um, and so forth. And I was just telling her all my worries all the time. And I said, look, this is a potential. It could happen. You need to be careful. Um, all, and um, I also explained to her my fears. I don't know if I shared before, like my fears before, of, um, you know, having kids. Like if the kid is running, you know, going down, the out, running towards the app, you know, something dangerous. I don't think I can go and, you know, run and get the kid. <coughs> so I was just really being brutally honest. And I think it's kind of selfish in a way because you throw the responsibility uh in their court so they get they decide whether they want to start the relationship or not and i think it's better that way than just us bottling up um, our fears and just always being with someone all the time but at the back of our head we're wondering whether their life will be you know fucked up by us or not um so yeah i so i guess it has worked out for me and my fiance because we're still together we've been together for close to three years now um so yeah just be brutally honest throw the responsibility to their end and let them decide they want whether they want to start a relationship with you or not and it really made my life i'm going back i'm going in circles it really made my life a lot easier because i didn't need to worry about all that I don't need to worry about whether uh, whether I'm gonna ruin her relation, whether I make her life worse or not, because it's her decision to 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 to, um, to, t to take it up or not, to to go to take a bet with me or not. So um, yeah, so that's my advice. Friendship, brutal honesty. I've 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 heard and seen a few you know a few posts about people. With, you know, worry about, you know, the things that I've discussed, dragging them down and so forth. And just being unable to communicate that with the um, potential new partners or partners. And I just say, just just, just be brutally honest. Um, so, yeah. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is just the, uh, the feeling of being um, an inconvenience and being useless. Uh, I'm sure many of you understand just being useless because we can't do much. We can't do, we can't, I can't lift things. I can't help around the house much. Um, and, you know, sometimes when we get back from work, we'll just go straight to bed, straight to bed. And like, there's just so much that um, our potential, if our significant other is health, uh, healthy, then there's so much for them to do. And I came up, uh well what happened is that one of my colleagues right um she was talking about her marriage with her husband and she mentioned this something called a uh, relationship contract now initially when i heard about um relationship contract i thought it was just it just didn't seem it just seemed, seemed a bit odd right it's just very weird right i didn't understand that you you know but essentially what the contract is meant to do is that you are meant to state to each other exactly what you are, you want out of the relationship. Exactly. And that clarity is really helpful um, because it's a tool that can be used by both sides to make sure that you are on the right path. Right path? And also that you don't go straight away from the from what the contract states. So for example, uh, my contract with my fiance is that so long as both of us are happy to be like, we consider being with each other like home, like it's a safe place. Like I like hanging out with her and she likes hanging out with me. As long as that she feels that I'm home and she's, you know, vice versa right then that's it as long as we, we like hanging out with each other that's the most basic requirement 
So to use that in an example, why, why is that useful? <coughs> is that sometimes when you feel like, when you're in a relationship and you feel like, hey, um, why isn't my significant other doing the laundry? Hey, why aren't we able to go out and party more? Hey, why aren't we able to um, um, buy a house together or buy a car together or anything? Because these are the thoughts that naturally can creep up in relationships. But if you think back to what your contract is with each other, your contract is so long as you like hanging out with each other and that you feel like the other person is home, then when you have those thoughts, you go back to this contract, you go like, oh, that's just not on because I already agree that I want to hang out. So long as I want to be with this person, I feel comfortable with this person, I should do my own laundry. I should go out and buy my own car. I should go and decide to go out and travel with my friends instead of my significant other, right? So that clarity, I, I, hopefully I've answered that clearly. I, I hope that make, made sense. Um, so, and it works both ways as well, to be honest. And I think it's really good. Like it keeps you straight in, that, in line what your relationship is about. And if you do go, if you go curve out and demand more or demand less, then, you know, uh, it can bring you back to, you know, the straight and narrow. Um, and so that, so I think the relationship uh, contract really helps when it comes to if you feel like um, you're a burden, right? Just make the contract with your significant other exactly what both of you want out of a relationship. And if you both are clear, then it's, it's, it might you know work better. The other thing that I want to talk about is that I you know like it's normal and I read it a few times that people feel like there's such a burden and you know burden in the relationship and that they feel like their you know partner should go and find someone better, right? And they feel horrible dragging their life down. Now I just want to share a different point of view. Um, and some of the concepts in Buddhism they talk about this is that there you're giving someone else an opportunity to help someone right it doesn't have to be what we're talking about right now whether it's you know being in a relationship you know, one with chronic pain one without like if you're a let me think of an example like if you're like mm, somewhere right uh, let me see. Like, if you're mopping the, like, let's say, let's say you're cleaning the kitchen and you've got kids, right? You know, when you're cleaning the kitchen and you can finish, you can, you know, clean it up by yourself. But it's not a bad idea to ask your kids uh, or ask your mom or your, your, bro your friends, your brothers and sisters, if they are there, to come help you. Because it actually gives someone an opportunity to help. And that is charity on its own as well. Like when you get people to, when you ask people to come help you, it's charity as well. Like you're giving them the opportunity to help. And in Buddhism ways, it's like you're allowing someone else the, the opportunity to practice their compassion, practice their empathy. And... It may, I mean, for me, it makes perfect sense. I mean, I don't want to go off topic too much, but this world we live in needs a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion. You know, like you've got, you know, marriage and e equality. You've got, you know, currently there's, you know, li you know, I, I think, I guess in the U.S., the li liberals and Republicans, and you've got North Korea and South Korea. And it's just a, a lot of empathy is required in this world. So it's not a bad thing to, to help let people have the opportunity to experience uh, what it's like to step in your, in your shoes. You know, like when, you know, like cleaning a house or doing other chores. So, um, so back to my point, I guess I'm talking about this is that don't feel bad too much. Um, I don't mean that. There's another way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is that you're giving someone the opportunity to, to help you, right? And 
that's a good thing, right? Uh, so yeah. Um, the other thing that I th is that the fact that chronic pain really uh, saps us of all energy, right? Because we have to deal with the pain. Uh, we have to do our exercises. We have to, you know, go see the doctor. We have to do. There's a lot of things that we have to do. And the thing is that it doesn't mean that you're lazy, um, and it doesn't mean that we're a loser either. Don't feel like you're lazy, and don't feel like that you're a loser. Um, it just means that you don't have a normal level of pain as a normal person, <coughs> and you don't have the same endurance level. And it just means that we actually have to work even harder than most people, and. Um, you know, you know, it takes us more energies to get dressed. It takes us more energy to, to get in the shower. It takes more energy to eat and work and everything. It's. I remember someone put it really nicely. It's like playing life on hardcore mode or hard mode, right? And I want to share that and how I use that analogy to actually benefit the life of my fiance. Because what she sees is that I'm going through pain. I do my exercise every day. Um, I still go out and make friends. Um, I organize volunteering events that we go ahead, we go out to orphanages and I get a bunch of about 10 to 15 strangers and we go to the orphanage and we play with the kids, play drums with the kids, we you know, sing with the kids and, and so forth. Um, and also I try and make an effort to make friends um, I, do, uh, I mentioned before um, I do a lot of reading compared to before I do a lot of things that is uh, for self-betterment of myself <laughs> you know what like she sees that um, my fiance sees that because even though with my disadvantages I'm still fighting through right and that should be like that's that's what I mean when it's living with chronic cancer. We are actually stronger than most people out there. We haven't quit the game. We didn't go control alt four. Like we haven't quit the game. We're fighting it on ex expert level. Like you know, it's something that someone's playing on bigger <laughs> beginner level should go like, oh, you guys are so awesome, right? It's an inspiration to her that I'm working much harder than what she is, even though I'm going through constant, you know, pain. So, I want, I want to share that idea with others. Like, even though you're, you know, you may feel like you're lazy and so forth, but you can, you don't have to see the situation that way. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I want to talk about is um, you know, like when we feel drained and then when we feel um, you know, emotionally exhausted, that we'll be really snippy and just being, you know, just being an asshole. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know if I shared before, is that one of my, you know, like when we feel this way, we might go after our families. Uh, we might go after our brother, you know, our siblings. We might go after our friends and our colleagues. Like we'll be, we'll be, we'll snap at them, right? And um, it's really hard not to. But um, my experience is that if you practice not to snap at other people, even though you have the rights or you feel that you have the rights to, you still can practice to the extent that you don't do it as much or don't do it at all um, but the more important thing is don't uh, be too proud to apologize um, one of my biggest regret that I can think of is that I was at work I don't know if I should before I was at work and this 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 colleague of mine she'll always come she'll come in at three four o'clock that's when her shift starts and she'll come in and she'll say all, every day, all the time, she'll say, because she goes through back pain as well. And um, she'll ask me, oh, so how's your day? How's your pain? She, she always says, how's your pain? How's your pain? And because of that specific day, I wasn't, you know, feeling <laughs> too hot, right? <coughs> I, was, I was in a lot of pain. And I told her, 
it's none of your business. And we were friendly at the start, and uh, and as, as as I mentioned, she checks in with my pain, but after I said that, that's the end of the friendship. And I didn't apologize to her what I said, and to this day I still regret it. And if you really think about it, like if you apologize for being snappy at someone. There's so much more benefits that comes out of it. You show, you show the other person that you know, that you are not that you are. It's not. It gives the other person. I guess what I mean is that because I snap at her, just imagine the consequences, right? The consequences that she might not be as caring to someone else, because she'll be like, oh, I cared about you know Peter the other time. And you know he backfired at me. Maybe in the future she doesn't want to do it. But imagine if I did apologize to her, then she'll go like, "Oh, okay." Now I understand that people in pain can, you know, they don't mean it. And yeah, so don't uh, don't be too proud to apologize,、uh, even if it's your kids or even if it's your loved ones. Just don't don't be too don't be too proud. Even though if you feel like I have the right to, but you have you might feel like you have the right to, but you still should apologize. So I think that's an important important thing to do. Apologize. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is that I've noticed that um, <coughs> some people talk about um, like they talk about the pain a lot. Like I kind of mentioned it in my my previous video, like. You know, when you're in so much pain, it seems to be the only thing you talk about, like your doctor visit and your medications and so forth. And you know, you 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 dump all this information down to your friends and your loved ones and your family.、Um, but as my advice to、um, what we should do is that we should try and educate our friends,、uh, or educate our loved ones that when we Like when we dump that information down, tell them that you don't expect them to fix it. That you just really want someone to listen. But even though they listen, but you don't want to be brushed off. You know, I hear a lot of comment like someone will complain about their condition, and then you know their family or friends will just say, "Oh, you know, it's nothing. You're just being a weakling. You know, you need to toughen up a bit more." Um, and that's just being brushed off. <coughs> I think it's important, not just like we, a lot of people. I think in pain, just expect other people to know how to respond to us, but they don't. You know, they haven't experienced it. So, tell them that you don't expect them to fix it.、Um, tell them that you know. Just tell them that. Just let me. Just let me know that you've listened, and 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 just don't brush me off. And maybe just say you know I'm. I'm sorry that really sucks. Or can I do this or do that for you? So,、um, yeah, that's it. Just listen, listen. Don't be brushed off. Now, there is one thing. I'll end with one last thing. Is that this might be just for me? I don't know. Like when I was with my fiance, right? She, because I don't complain about my condition that much. I just. As I said, I'm so used to living, you know. Uh, uh, um, I'm so used to living with chronic pain myself. Like I don't really need other people to help me.、Um, the trouble that I had at one stage in our relationship is that she never checked in with me, like how my back is. Like I'll tell her, like I'm having a bad week. Oh, I'm having a bad couple of months. Right or it's really pain. Oh, I think I hurt myself. Oh, I think I I did something. I do that a lot, right? But initially, she won't check in with me. She won't ask me how things are going, and it's not that I required her to check in with me. Like she, I didn't really need her to help me, but it made me worry because it made me feel like she might not be a hundred percently clear what she was getting herself into. Like. Our relationship, like my pain, could I could be even more disabled than I am now, right? So, 
I just felt like she didn't understand, you know, the severity of what it is like to be with me. Um, so, as I said, I, um, before in my videos, I was saying that previously in my videos, I was just brutally honest with her. And when I thought of that, I just told her straight away. So I think that's important. I think it's important, like, for the partners, our partners, if you are in a relationship, for them to check in with you. I guess. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Hopefully you understand. Um, one last thing is that... Um, actually, two last things. Two last things. Um, one is that it might be... I've, I've read a couple of times and I thought about it as well. Like there's an open door, like having an open door policy. And the open door, obviously, it just means that if they do want to leave, then they can leave. Um, and I don't think it's a, I think it's a good policy, good policy, but obviously everything, all relationship is different. I guess what I want to share about the open door policy is that just, it's under, like we should understand that things change. People change. You know, the seasons change, right? It all changes. I read a couple of times, even though when they have an open door policy that when their, you know, their husband or their wife leaves, like they feel like they cheated, you know, they feel like, oh, they said that it doesn't matter, I'll always be with you, and even when they leave, they, you know, they feel, I mean, it's natural, I don't blame them, but like they feel, you know, anguish and everything, that, you know, they lied to me, they said they were always going to be with me, but they left. I think it's more important to see that thing, people change, right? <clears throat> and always have that, con that concept that things are always changing. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing in this universe is set in stone. People change. And if it's time for them to go, it's time for them to go. Don't feel like, you know, you've been cheated. Oh, that's my opinion. Like, you've been cheated, you've been lied to. At that, at that moment, they probably really believed it, you know. But later on, it didn't turn out, you know. They, they probably just they haven't discovered what they really need. And it's just part of life, you know. You go through life and you learn things. And if, if living with someone that is in, in chronic pain is not for you, then... You know, they learn that and it's, it's only right for us to let them go. Um, so, yeah. So, to summarize, it's just really, really just about finding the right match. I mean, you could find someone that is okay with living with, with being with someone with chronic pain. It's just finding the right stuff. Like, we, there's no way that I'm going to be, you know, dating someone or getting married with someone that's really hyperactive. That's, going out every day is I mean it's possible if your contract states that it's fine it's possible I guess it's possible um, one of the topics I guess I'll leave with the last topic of um, that um, I don't really have much experience with and that is that when you're already in the relationship and then you got injured and now you're in pain and now they want to leave or they already left. Um, I kind of touched on it that uh, being single isn't really that bad. Um, but what do I want to say? I just want to say that um, there's life has many factors that make you happy. Um, and you know there's friends there's hobbies there's careers there's personal growth there's family there's studies you know maybe you're studying something um there also could be you know the community that you're in so when your loved one does disappear don't try and don't it's, it's a bit harsh but don't try and exaggerate that love is the only thing in your life um because there's so many other things to 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 you know in life it's just more than that um, so when someone does leave you just focus your life on other areas of your life such as work career studies and, and so forth and your hobbies um, and during this time just make more friends like it's going to be really lonely but just try and make more friends i know it's hard and then i know everyone's capability is different but go watch my other video go watch it um 
and or you can read more books uh, you can reach out to family members reach out to uh, other friends um, the thing is that everything has a beginning and an end <coughs> um, you know like you know in the world we live in is day and is night um, and then there is you know four seasons there's spring summer uh, autumn and winter everything has a beginning and an end a start and a finish um, you know if you have a seed this seed becomes you know sprouts and it becomes a plant and it becomes a tree <clears throat> and then into a tree it gets cut up into wood and the wood is made into you know a table or a chair like things are forever forever changing and without an end there can be no beginning right um, and you just have to see how you just have you just have to see things as like that it's always changing even our pain one day will be pain free whether it's you know we're six foot under or, or, or something There's, nothing is constant the universe is forever in the cycle um, so you just have to see things in, in, in the positive light like yeah so if, if they left you then there could be other opportunities down the track and if they cheated on you or they left you just you know it's just part of life it's just part of how the universe works um, <clears throat> if you're a 90s kid um, there's a song called closing time and I really like the lyric did I like do I like the lyric a little bit but it, I think it's relevant it goes down um, the lyric goes Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. So, for those that have uh, their hearts broken, um, time will heal. Um, try and see the positive um, in everything. Uh, cherish what you've lost and um, be optimistic about the future. And that is um, even without pain you know I don't know there's still so many things that you know medically and science can improve our pain and I hope that one day that everyone will, will be pain free due to you know medication or, or so forth um, I'm more into exoskeletons because I can't lift anything and my back is not good but yeah maybe one day I'll be doing a video with the exoskeleton and lifting a car no, I'm kidding. So yeah, with that, um, I will end the video. So these are the my ideas, things that I think about uh, in regards to relationships and living with chronic pain. Um, lots of love. Um, take care. Bye.